Today, a few choice words about my friend, Dennis Jansen. We've sat next to one another in the newsroom for nearly three decades. Officially, I'm told that Denny is now transitioning. You know, one of those modern catch-all words that explains very little. But I think we have to ask, is Denny any good at transitioning? Well, I know this. He transitioned from that dark hair to a rich head of silver. He used to have a big furry stash. He went to the clean up her lip. In fact, DJ could one day be perfectly groomed, and the next day was positively hair-raising. Denny transitioned to Channel 9 back in the mid-80s. Till then, he was the enemy. When Johnny Bench retired, Denny broke the story for another station. He got a lot of applause. I got called on the carpet. Denny's always been good at sniffing out a story, working the phones, confirming the details, and taking it on the air. Nobody in this market has ever done it better. But he was also a reporter with a big personality. That's something he was born with. And personality is no small asset. Sometimes things don't go as scripted. You achingly wait for a tape. It helps to tap dance or at the very least hey, let's pick it up here. Actually, we discovered early that Denny couldn't dance at all. He was in a production of Damn Yankees at Riverbend. This was supposed to be a chorus line. Denny turned it into a solo act. We found out quickly that DJ could laugh at himself and we can laugh along with him. Here we go, Danny. One news okay, director dreamed up a winter sweeps piece called Fighting February Flam. Half, Each week, Denny would get one, weighed right on the air. It's tough yeah, enough to look at the right. scale, but to do it weekly before all of Cincinnati takes a lot of guts. In time, Denny had significantly less gut. Denny liked getting out for the majors, for the minors, and, and for the high schools. Secretly, this Price Hill kid wanted to be a star at Elder. So years later, when he got to deliver game balls from a helicopter, he'd charge onto the field like Hopalong Cassidy. We weren't sure if he was delivering the goods or running for office. Now, it should be noted, and I think Denny will agree with this, we surrounded him with some pretty great people. Among others, Bill Hemmer, another elder boy, now a star at Fox. Dee Lynham, a real spitfire, she's done great in Philly. Adorable Catherine Nero, smart, funny, and talented. Rising ABC star Paula Ferris, we knew how good she was 10 years ago. Add in creative producers and industrious photographers, we've had some really top shelf people. Despite all that talent, Denny was our lead dog. He was our bell cow. He was our go-to guy. He was our anchor. Now, the fact that you are so accessible, that's, that seems where, to be where you derive so much of your fun from, is being accessible to the fans. If we needed a delicate interview with Marge, she'd talk to DJ. She actually knew his name. She called the rest of us babe or honey. Bob Huggins was difficult at best. Note the unbridled excitement in his face as he waits for a question to be asked. When the Reds won the World Series in 1990, Eric Davis's daughter, Erica, swiped away Denny's mic. He just went with it. And there was a legendary live interview one weeknight with a couple of incoherent Australian wrestlers known as the Bushwhackers. Denny didn't try to interview. He had to referee. <laughs> well, they got about six teeth between them. DJ has seen it all over the years. I mean, he's gone from typewriters to computers. He's gone from film to digital. He's gone from elegantly worded scripts to simple-minded tweets. And he's been making a transition for years. So tonight we celebrate a remarkable run. 29 years, seven news directors, thousands of stories, and lots of laughs. There's a mural above our newsroom that chronicles the rich history of Cincinnati broadcasters. Appropriately, Dennis Jansen has been sitting right in their midst this entire time. John Popovich, nine on your side. Good luck, my friend.